praise the Lord. We serve a mighty God. I am so excited in my spirit today about what God is doing in this season and what God is doing in this hour. And you know what? You are a part of God's agenda. It's not an accident that you've tuned in at this time. You're part of God's agenda today and even in this season and in this hour. For those of you that are tuning in for the first time, this is Wisdom for Women. Wisdom for Women is the coaching, discipling program for the 21st century Christian woman. And like I always say, men are watching as well because we bless the men as well. Praise the Lord. Very quickly, remember, you never watch Wisdom for Women alone. So take a second, take a minute and please call up a friend, call a family member, call somebody because we're going to be talking about domestic violence amongst born again Christians. There's somebody that you know that needs to hear this, somebody that needs help and needs to hear what we're talking about today. Take a second and please call them up. God bless you. I'll be right back. Hello, welcome to today's Rema on Wisdom for Women. My name is Deborah Asuni. I'm a mother and a social researcher. Today's Rema is designed to give you greater insight into God's words through Pastor Madri's books. Today I'm talking about the A to Z of the multipurpose woman, which has blessed me richly. Why is that the case? Well, it has given me the opportunity to think about the many things I am. Now, the book is, is as it says, A to Z. So it gives you different ways of describing yourself. I particularly like the word dynamic because it talks about Deborah, who I'm named after in the Bible, how she was a judge and a mother. In the time when women were, see, were seen and not heard, she was a judge and she was an important person. It's interesting that Pastor Marjorie has been able to capture the various elements of the people and the women we are and to enable us to strengthen ourselves when we're lacking in information because she explains to us things like why we should be Christ-like and how we, how we should be. But even when we're not feeling strong, you pick up a copy of the A to Z of a multipurpose woman. You read a section and it guides you to certain Bible passages that remind you that you're a strong woman, that you're a flexible woman, that you're an accountable, adaptable, and to be able to say, I am a woman that is multipurpose, multi-talented, and able to achieve many things, able to achieve my goals, able to be achieve my mission in life and to be a help me to my partner to my husband to be supportive of my church to be a good mother to my children and to be a good worker at my job and also to be business minded and entrepreneurial i hope you've been blessed i will encourage you to get a copy of a to z of the multipurpose woman and thank you for listening my name is deborah Anthony. thank you century mentoring, impartation, yoke destroying, and healing of hearts, bringing complete restoration and transformation in the lives of women from every nation, tongue, tribe, race, and culture. Welcome to Wisdom for Women International with your hostess, Pastor Marjorie Asumawe. Amen. Welcome back. You can see the excitement that I feel in my spirit. I know somebody is about to be helped. 
Praise God. And I'm not here alone today. I've got a woman of God who is fervent in her spirit right here. And I want to introduce to us Kim Bacchus. Hello. Kim, bless you so much. Thank you so much. For it's a me. pleasure to see you. Let me just tell them who you are. Or should I let you say it yourself? Oh, tell God. us a bit about yourself and a little bit about your story because today we're talking about domestic violence amongst born again Christians. Mm -hmm. We've been taking that series and this is the third part of it. So tell us a bit about yourself, please, Kim. Okay. I am the director of KBS Kim Backer Solutions and what we basically do is life transformation, um, helping people move from A to B, coaching, and motivation and um, I speak a lot at conferences as well in regards to motivating people and in regards to domestic violence as well because I was a victim of domestic violence. Mm. I praise God that I am an overcomer and I have um, gone through it so I understand it. So my main concern was that you know they, there are a lot of people suffering in the body of Christ and not speaking about suffering it. Suffering quietly. Suffering in silence mm. and not speaking about this issue. And um, it's, it's, it's not that they don't want to or that, that, that they can't. It's just that mm. there is no, um, there's no outlet because there's no awareness about this subject mm. in the body of Christ. And it, it, it just strikes me so weird because we have it so much, we hear it so much in the secular world. Mm. And, um, you know, I always imagine that the church is meant to be like a hospital that we help people yeah. and if we're not addressing it then they're going to be seeking it elsewhere and, and you know it, it's only a matter of time before we start losing mm. our saints wow. back to the world tell, tell me a little bit about you said you are a, you were a victim of mm -hmm. domestic violence what exactly did you go through what was it that happened? What happened? Tell us a bit. There might be a woman that is watching. And you know, sometimes people don't even know what they're going through. They think it's normal. So tell us what you went through. Why did you think it was abnormal? Let's, let's hear your story. I was a victim of domestic violence. I did not know I was a victim for about eight years. Jesus. And I realized I was a victim when I watched a TV show and they were talking about domestic violence. And the victim then mm -hmm. was mentioning things that he did to her and things he said to her. And mm -hmm. I sat there and I said, hang on a second, that's, that's, that, that's, that's, what, same, I'm going that's what I'm going through. And it's very difficult because there's so many women today that don't realize that that what they're actually going through is called, it has a name, it's mm. called something. And it's not called normal. This is what we need to mm. get, mm. mention this really, make this very clear. It's not, it's not it's normal. It's not normal. It's not for normal. You to, yeah. For you to go through what? To go what? through, to go through um, well, I went through um, domestic abuse in regards to sort of physical beating. Physical beating. Um, where I, you know, I've been punched in the face, my nose has been broken, my eye socket's been fractured, I've been in and out of hospital. Um, I suffered with this in silence because I was too scared to even say anything to anyone. Um, I suffered mental abuse. K k mental abuse, physical, physical abuse. Physical abuse, yep. Yeah. And I, I, can, I can honestly say, I think out of physical and mental abuse, the mental well, abuse was those, those actually- two are enough. It's enough. The mental abuse for me was um, was it left deep scars in me because it, it eroded my confidence, my self esteem, to be told that you're you're ugly, that you're fat, that you're, you're, you're what? that you're ugly, that you you're, yes, oh my God. yes, and did you believe it? Of course, you did. Yes, I, I he used to tell me how to dress, and he would say that. Um, if you dress this way, this is good. And I would dress just to please him that way because he would put me in tracksuit bottoms and tracksuit tops and trainers and tie my hair back, no makeup. And he would say, that's, that's beautiful. And I believed it. And, and I, I did it to please that's him. That's funny. Yeah. And I, I truly believed it. So, and, it it's, and, then, and then he would say things, horrible things to me. 
he, you know, you'd go out your way to make good food, clean the house, be a good person to, to him. And he would make me feel like all that was for nothing. Can, can I just ask it? Because I'm just wondering what would make someone believe such a lie. I'm looking at you now. It's not like you're wearing so much makeup, but you are beautiful. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So what would make a woman believe such a lie? What was it? Was it I'm, I'm not trying to say that you were responsible for the words that you were mm. hearing, but what could have low self-esteem cause low self-esteem as a result of what was that was there something that you were going through or had been through before yeah. that I, when i was at school i was bullied i was bullied mm. a lot and um i um I, I was so fearful to even go to school because I, there'd all be somebody there to, to to want to hurt me in some way shape or form and um when i met my partner I felt that he would protect me and I geared towards him even more because I just felt well he could and he would and when people started to realize that I was actually dating him people backed off people didn't bully me anymore so now I started to rely on him I've never known how to stand up on my own two feet or to defend myself I've always relied on him to defend me and to to uphold and so me. He, he just sees the opportunity. Oh, he sees the opportunity immediately, mm. and I and I totally believe because I mean he was amazing. You said he was your partner. Obviously, you weren't married. We were not married. Were both of you going to church? What was the situation? No, uh, Did this happen to you as a church girl? No. Or outside church? It was outside church, I but I got baptized during the, the abuse. The whole process. The whole process. Did you talk about it? I joined a church about 28 years ago. I gave my life to the Lord. Praise God. And um, I did not talk about it. I just was so happy that I had so many people around me. Um, I felt like I, ha I've had, I had a place that was safe. I, I, I didn't really care if anyone knew about my business. Um, the sad part was it that I had to actually go home to that. Um, I lived with it. Then it started to dawn on me when I was hearing the preaching that this God that we're supposed to be serving is a loving God and we're supposed to be helping each other, supporting each other and I actually felt I wasn't getting that so then who would I speak to about this subject? So I did mention it to one or two people but it was almost like they just ignored me completely. Like it didn't exist. Like it didn't exist. You know, um, sweetheart, you're watching this, probably watching with your family and um, I was talking to Kim before we came up the camera and some people might think, what exactly is Pastor Marge up to? Why is she dealing with this subject? Why is she, you know, pushing this so hard? Beloved, God has given me a call to women. Women are precious in the sight of God. And that is not to say that it's only women who suffer domestic violence because some women are violent against their husbands. So it's vice versa, but you know, women suffer more. And that's why anything that will hurt or bring pain to a woman, it becomes our responsibility and wisdom for women to talk about it. We want to expose the enemy. Our sister is saying that she was in church, but nobody was listening. And that's what, you know, the world loves it. When Tama was raped, mm -hmm. Tama spoke to her brother, yeah. Absalom. Absalom saw her and knew, you know, yeah. there are changes. Mm -hmm. Something has happened mm -hmm. to you. But Absalom said, don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And the enemy thrives mm -hmm. in secrecy. And that's why we're talking about it. Yes. There might be someone who is listening right now and you've seen the symptoms and you're saying, I'm going through the same thing. You need to speak to someone. Let that thing off your chest. Praise God. Um, my son sort of grew up from about till about the age of four or five, and he started to see that you know, see things happen to me. Mm. And I honestly say to women today, I said, if you don't leave to save your own life, leave for your children. Mm. Because I remember one day I had. Um, prepared some dinner for him 
and I gave it to him and I went into the kitchen and when I turned around he took the he was standing behind me and he took the plate and he smashed it in my face I blacked out because I you know it was a shock I didn't know what had hit me like that you know when they say you see stars you really do see stars and when I caught myself and I, I looked at him and I, and I was taking the food out of my hair and I said, why did you do that? He said the food was too cold. It wasn't warm enough. Why would I bring him food like that? He dragged me by my hair and dragged me across the carpet. My knees were red raw. I remember I begged him to stop. And at that point, at the corner of my eyes, I looked and I could see my son sitting in the corner, just looking at me. And for the very first time in all my experience of domestic abuse, I noticed my son. Before, it was, my, it was a case of survival. You don't really think about anybody else in the room. But for that first time, I just looked at him. And the thought that came to me was, my God, what am I doing to my son? What is he witnessing? What is he going to become when he gets older? Because if that's the whole picture that he kept seeing, you just you were just raising another perpetrator. Yeah. Yes, exactly. In your home. Exactly. I have another very quick question. Sure. Now you've been through this, you came out, today you're teaching people mm -hmm. what to do and how to, you know, get themselves better, how to build self esteem. Mm -hmm. Recently I think about a month or two months ago, we we heard about Claire's law. Mm -hmm. Has that been signed? in the UK, tell us about it, what is it, you know, what exactly is the Claire's Law, because okay. somebody might need that resource, we don't know, is this something you would recommend, just tell us about Claire's Law. Okay, just to get it absolutely right, I just want to read it first, because this perfect. is the most up-to-date yeah. information that I have, so that yeah. we can understand what's happening That's perfect, here. that's fine. Now the policy is named after Claire Wood, who was killed by her ex-boyfriend, George Atherton, in 2009. Now, clear law will allow people to check criminal records of a new partner. This is to be extended across England and Wales. And, um, you know, basically what happened was that she got involved with this man. Mm. She didn't know nothing about him. She realized that he, he, she didn't know, but he actually had a past of abusing Abuse women. Abuse and violence. Wow. And violent against women. And what he did, he actually strangled her, set her body on a light, and he killed her. Jesus. And between her father and um, an MP called Hazel Blair, they, um, the police um, brought this thing out called the Clear Law, which is also known as a Domestic Violence Disclosure Scheme. And that allows someone to ask the police, and that could be a third party as well, if the person in their life has a history of violence. Violence. I think this is fantastic. This actually, you know, helps. This will save lives. Mm. This will save somebody from being killed. Mm. This will save, you know, and, and it's brilliant that it's been extended to third parties. So it could be like a neighbor. If you saw, or you a could parent. be a neighbor or a parent that exactly that has mm. that that realize that something's not too quite right about, about this, this fella. man or this yes. woman. Oh, this I need woman. to check it we out. We need to check it out. <laughs> and some, you know, all we need is that information to say, hang on a second, he has been locked away because he's been violent. He has mm. done this. And many women today are, are very smart and very, have so much integrity. And if they have the information, they're not going to stay in it. Nine out of 10, we hope mm. that they would not stay in Hopefully. it. And that they will look at this as a warning sign and, and move away from it or find mm. a way. The police do do a thing that they help you to get out of the situation. Mm. You know, um, I'm just thinking, thinking aloud. Yeah. Rather than checking with the police about his violent life, would you say, okay, rather than do that, why not just pray? Somebody can tell you, Pastor or um, Kim, I've prayed about it. And God told me, despite his past, he has changed. Mm -hmm. I can still go ahead. How would you deal with a situation like that? Do perpetrators change? Do you know of anyone that has been so violent in their relationships? They've met Christ, they've gone through programs, and they've changed. Absolutely. They have changed. Absolutely. Absolutely. They can change. All things are possible with God, and 
it can happen if, if first of all, the perpetrator has to recognise that mm. they are abusive. And they need help. And that they need help. Yeah. Once they've opened up their hearts to that idea or that incident, then God will come in and heal them. And mm. with the help of the ministers, with the church and the mm. backing of professional help yeah. as well, it, it, it all adds to that strength mm -hmm. that, that feeds into that perpetrator, mm -hmm. that makes them realize the errors of their ways, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the call to repent mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the wrong that they've done, and to realize that God loves them mm -hmm. no matter what, mm -hmm. and that, you know, for them to start loving themselves. Because more if, importantly, if, you, if they love themselves, they won't want to hurt. If you love yourself, yeah. you can love others. That's true. But um, it becomes easy. It becomes a lot, a lot easier. Is there a circumstance, or under what circumstances, may I ask, where you could ask a Christian woman, you know, advise a Christian woman to utilize the opportunities that the Claire's Law offers? I say any time you feel that there is a threat mm. or you feel fearful mm. or you feel that there is going to be a big problem mm. or you feel it in your spirit, mm. I think, first of all, I, I, I think if you suspect someone is, mm. is not too right, mm. Uh, pray about it. Mm. God will speak to you. God mm. will tell you when something's mm. not right. Mm. And then God will start revealing it to you. Mm. You will see certain things that will make signs, you signs yeah. that you have to open your eyes to see these. Open mm. your spiritual eyes to see these signs. Mm. Mm. And then when you see that, when you see the signs and you know in your heart of heart that this is not right, not sitting then quite right. you have to do something. <laughs> Do not sit and be quiet about it. Mm. There is facility. This facility for has you been to open check. for you to check. I agree. This is and a I don't think send. anyone should feel guilty. Of course, we shouldn't go nosing into no. people's no, affairs. No, no, no. But when there's, you know, that uneasiness, when there's an uneasiness, people need to check. This is all. I think anybody has to stay. This is somebody's life at risk. Yeah. How can I save a life? Mm. By checking, you could actually save someone's life mm. because you've realized that your, what you had felt in your spirit was absolutely correct mm. and you've done the right thing. There's nothing to feel guilty about. That's true. You have to feel in your heart you've done the right thing because you've saved someone's life. Whether they choose to listen to you is another matter, mm. but you know what? You did the right thing. Mm. And you get convicted by the Holy Ghost. Mm. You you know when you have to do something, and when you don't, it bothers you. Mm. And these are the these. This door has been opened mm. for us now to go and check mm. to see if if this person is yeah. you know that I'm getting into a relationship, a relationship with exactly. Yeah, who are they? Are they really this loving person that they present themselves That's to right. be? And uh, they may have a past mm. that the police have a record of wow. that could actually make you stop <laughs> and not get into that or take exactly. that step. So you could end up marrying that person. Mm. This can stop a lot of divorce, a lot of heartache and a lot, a lot of deaths. pain and a lot of deaths. And um, you, you, you said it took you time to talk. Our other sister who was on the program could have said it took her time to talk. When you notice this, that's where people like you need to really come on board. What are the ways that a pastor can... I know you have this K, KBS, KBS Domestic, Violence, Domestic program. Violence Program that teaches pastors. Tell us about it, please. Yes. What I normally do, I go in first and, um, and, and talk about the subject of abuse and domestic mm. violence mm. And, 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 and bring awareness on this subject. Then it's up to the, um, the pastor of the church to say, mm. well, you know, we would like to be trained, the ministers, mm. the leaders of the church, mm. how to recognize the signs, mm. what to do in an event of, mm. of one of our congregation, our members I'm coming to sure. us yeah. that says, you know, help me. Yeah. And um, really to educate and to, in, not only are you helping your congregation, mm. you're helping the community. That's true. What will happen is that the community will hear that that, that church actually helps mm. with people that mm. are being abused they want help mm. um, it, it, it brings awareness it brings strength it brings unity and it to me it's, it's a case of 
it's doing God's work. You're mm. helping. Mm. You're saving someone's mm. life. Mm. You may not see them dead now, but give it a couple of years. You don't Jesus. know what can happen. So the earlier we intervene, the earlier, you intervene. The earlier church is talked about things yes. and become comfortable. We're talking about subjects like this. And just before we go, you've written three books. Yes, I have. Tell us about the books very briefly. Okay. The first book I wrote was um, it was it's based on domestic my experience mm. um, as a victim and I wanted to write this book to to help other women to if they didn't want to speak to me to buy the book and to read it and that give, and right. it would help them it would mm. educate them mm. it's called um, um, stop hurting me time to get out wow and um, the second book I wrote was um, geared towards parents and it's called Help, um, I've Got a Teenager. And what it is, Help, is about, I've, got a, I've got a Teenager. But what I did was I wanted it to relate to abuse as mm. well. Being a parent, being um, the children witnessing domestic violence and mm. then now they are a teenager. What is, go what is going through their minds? Wow. How do you deal with it? How do you speak their language? What do you do? From my own experience I wrote this book. Mm. Um, my third book was um, Stress, Who Me? Mm. And it talked about when I was actually being abused how stress made me sick. It made mm. me physically and mentally ill mm. and doctors prescribed me Valium and all different kinds of tablets and these tablets were the same tablets that I actually tried to commit suicide with mm. because I tried to take my own life because I couldn't bear living in the relationship that I was living in and I thought I'd be better off dead wow. than to be alive and so I wanted people to read this book in fact, all the books are interlinked with each other mm. and they can be found on my website. Wow, Kim, this has just been a blessing. Thank you for being bold. Thank you for being brave. Thank, Thank you. you for talking about it and for helping a sister out there. Yes. God bless you, beloved. I love you all so much. This is what Wisdom for Women is all about. We bring the best to you. See you next week you will hear all the announcements and i'm waiting to take your course we want to pray with with you we want to pray with you we want to guide you we just want to help you may the lord bless you and the lord keep you see you next time on wisdom for women thank you for tuning in to wisdom for women if this message has been a blessing to you pastor marjorie would like to hear from you Please call 0208-800-6001 or email us at admin at wisdomforwomeninternational.org. Please visit our website for more details and other useful resources. God richly bless you.